horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? Away! The town of Springville was in the heart of the cattle country. For months, there had been an undercurrent of complaint by the ranchers in the community who resented the opening of rich pasture land to homesteaders. Houses of sod, dirt, and logs dotted what had been the open range, and fences were beginning to appear. The Lone Ranger and Toto had heard rumors of impending trouble. They had learned that the ranchers had pooled a large sum of money to be used by an agent named Deal for the purpose of buying out the farmers and persuading them to find homes elsewhere. Seeking further information, the masked man and his Indian friend rode to the homestead land, drew rein and dismounted in front of Jack Abbott's log house. The door of the house opened fast. Abbott came out holding a rifle. All right, you two, you're covered. Take it easy. I'll take it easy. I'll give you five seconds to clear out before I start shooting. Is it the custom in Missouri to shoot travelers who stop for a drink of water? No. But a masked man and a red skin... You're not a killer, Abbott. You will not shoot us in cold blood. You call my name. You know I'm from Missouri. Yes, and I know you're a brave man, a good farmer, and the leader of the homesteaders. You know a lot. Who are you? Consider Tonto and me as friends. My friends don't wear masks. Do your enemies? Well, no, but uh, we've had lots of engine trouble, and that man's an engine. Because of that, are you going to kill him? Uh, well, I can't argue with you. you. Help yourself to water, then clear out. It's over yonder near the shed. As a matter of fact, Abbott, I came here to talk to you as a friend. We have heard that the cattlemen were trying to buy you out. Me? All of the homesteaders. First I heard of it. They've always used this valley for rangeland, and they want to continue using it. If they try to drive us out, we'll fight to the last man. I said they were hoping to buy you out. And I said I hadn't heard a thing about it. Several weeks ago, they held a meeting in Springville. Each cattleman chipped in cash in proportion to the size of his ranch. What? They collected thousands of dollars to be used to buy out you homesteaders. Well, of all the no Each good... of you was to be offered a fair price for the land and the work you put into improving it. A fair price? What's a fair price for a man's heart and soul? You think there's cash enough in the world to pay for what we went through to get here and settle this valley? No. You're doggone right. We wouldn't sell at any price. Anyhow, no one made an offer. That's strange. Why? 
The cattlemen think Deal is making progress. He's assured them that you'll all be out of this valley before autumn. Did you say Deal? Oh, yes, why? He stopped here a couple of days ago to talk to me. But he didn't say anything about the cattlemen wanting to buy us out. He said the cattlemen didn't like us being here, which was no news to me. A couple of days ago? He was supposed to talk to you weeks ago. Well, he didn't. What did you tell him when he was here? I told him the cattlemen couldn't drive us out. And the engines couldn't drive us out either. You have trouble with Big Bear tribe? Yeah, we've had plenty of trouble with those varmints. They've stolen our stock, done what they could to ruin our crops, and set fire to a couple of buildings. That they'll be taken care of. I told Deal the Army would take care of them. The Army? Yeah. I sent word to the engine agent asking him to send for troops. Do the cattlemen know you've asked for the Army to come here? Deal might have told them about it. I told him that the soldiers were coming to protect us against the engines. And they'll protect us against the cattlemen, too, if they have to. When will the soldiers arrive? I know they're coming, but I don't know when. If they'll get here soon, we're likely to be wiped out. Then the cattlemen will get our land, and they'll not have to pay for it, either. They've already paid for it. They've paid deal. Uh, I wish I could believe that. It'd mean the cattlemen are willing to try to settle things peaceably. Mask, friend, speak truth. I figured they were the ones who set the engines against us. I'm sure you're wrong, Abbott. But someone's responsible for the Indian trouble. Big Bear has always lived at peace with the white man. Where are you going? To call on Cass Martin, the Indian agent. Easy, sir. Let him go. Let's go. Easy, fella. One, two, let him up. Stop. The Indian agency was a 12-hour ride from the homestead sites. Late that night, as the masked man and Tonto approached the isolated building on the northern side of Spring Mountain, they heard shots. What the scout! They raced through a forest of trees and underbrush and brought Scout and Silver to a rearing halt in the moonlit clearing in front of the Indian agents. Oh, 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 oh. He must have you. They're following ground. Easy, big fella, easy. <laughs> He's been wounded, Tonto. I'll do what I can for him. You go after the man who fired those shots. Um, get him up, Scout! Steady. Oh, you, you're masked. I'll try to help you. He, he'll get away. Go after him. Get him. Who shot you? His name is Deal. He... Uh, um... Cass Martin lost consciousness. The Lone Ranger carried him inside the office. He examined and dressed the bullet wounds. Several hours later, Tonto returned with discouraging news. Me try to follow tracks or follow right way. Him go through woods, then guide horse into creek. That means we'll not be able to find the trail until morning. Mm, that's right. This fellow hurt bad. One of the bullets grazed the side of his head, the other's in his back. Oh. Well, him lucky to be alive. Oh. He's regaining consciousness. Maybe tell who shoot him, huh? He named Deal as the man who shot him. Deal? Uh, Deal. Take it easy. You mask man, Indian. We're friends. You, you help me. Who are you? K.S. Martin, Indian agent. Kimasabi. Yeah. Maybe better him save strength. Not try talk. Uh, must talk. Deal. He... Oh, what about deal? He came here and stole papers. What papers? My, my credentials. Copy of telegram to Washington. Troops are on the way here. I, I think he... Must be planning to meet Captain Spires in, in my place. Where? Him meet army? Valley north of Red Rock Canyon. Uh, Martin. Martin. He's lost consciousness again. Oh, it, it better him rest now. Kimasabi. Yes. Why deal shoot him? Take papers. With the stolen credentials, he'll be able to pose as the Indian agent. I don't know what kind of a game deal is playing, but the stakes must be high. Toto, stay with Martin. Uh, where you go? To try to expose deal. How you do that? I'll go to the valley to see Captain Spires. Maybe Captain, not take word to mask man. Then I'll take off my mask and wear a disguise. Dawn was breaking as the Lone Ranger started for Green Valley. The use of makeup and a change of clothing gave him the appearance of a homesteader as he traveled steadily to reach the distant valley where Captain Spires and his men had made a temporary camp. Shortly before noon, the man named Deal presented himself at the encampment. 
Armed with the stolen credentials, he was taken immediately to Captain Spires. Well, you're Cass Martin, the Indian agent. That's right, sir. Here are my credentials. And here's a copy of the telegram I sent to Washington asking for help. It wasn't necessary to bring the telegram, Martin. I'm sorry I sent it in the first place, Captain. Sorry? Why? Because the army isn't needed here now. You mean the trouble between the Indians and the homesteaders has been settled? That's right, sir. Big Bear and the homesteaders are at peace. Be a waste of time for you and your men to stay around here. I must say the captain. Now, what, uh, what's going on? Corporal, who is that man? I don't know, Captain, but he insisted on seeing you. The homesteader approaching the captain and Deal was closely followed by armed guards. Neither Captain Spires nor Deal realized that the homesteader was in reality the Lone Ranger, wearing a disguise. Captain Spires, I must speak to you. I'll see you as soon as I finish with Mr. Martin. That's why I'm here, sir. That man is not Cass Martin. His what? name is Deal. That's well, a lie. After stealing Martin's credentials, you tried to kill him. Why, you loco... Hold it, Martin, hold it. Mister, that's a serious charge. He can't prove a word of it. Martin himself will prove it. He'll name you as the man who shot him. I'd like to see the critter who claims he's Cass Martin. He's at the Indian Agency. Why didn't you bring him here? He isn't able to travel, Captain. He's been seriously wounded. You're out of your head. If you'll come with me, Captain Spires, I'll take you to Martin. Listen, Captain, I've identified myself. You know who I am, and I can tell you who this stranger is. I've been trying to catch him for a long time. That story's too thin, Deal. I'm not Deal. I'm Cass Martin. And you're the polecat who started the trouble between the settlers and the Indians. Martin, are you sure of that? I'm sure of it, all right. For years, Big Bear lived peacefully with the folks around here. And all of a sudden, the homesteaders and the Indians were at each other's throats. The homesteaders blamed the Indians for robbing them. The Indians claimed the settlers had murdered a couple of braves and stolen Indian ponies. Oh. I investigated and found that a white man was behind the trouble. This is the man who caused it. I'll take him back to Springville myself. Have he tried for inciting the Indians? And he we'll wanted... take him into custody until we make a thorough investigation, Martin. Corporal... Disarm this homesteader. Yes, sir. Hold still, mister. Sorry, Captain. I have other plans. The Lone Ranger's fist flashed like sudden lightning. The surprised corporal took the blow on the chin. His knees buckled and he went down. Then twin Colts were in the Lone Ranger's hands. But at that instant, a tall, heavy-set sergeant stepped forward. He stepped behind the Lone Ranger and rasped... It's a gun in your back, mister. Good work, Sergeant Aker. I saw the whole thing, Captain. This critter must be loco to pull his guns on the United States Army. I'll take those guns. There. Now, Sergeant, place this man under guard. Let me deal with him, Captain Spires. I'll take him back to Springville. It's not necessary, Martin. My men and I have orders to establish permanent quarters near Springville. Come along, you. Very well, Sergeant. Put ropes on the Sergeant so he can't escape. Oh, uh, and send a detail back to take care of this corporal here. Yes, Captain Spires, you mean you and the soldiers will be staying in these parts? That's right, Martin. In that case, you might like a powwow with Big Bear, the Indian chief. Yes, I plan to talk to him. I'll go to his village now and make arrangements for the meeting. Why don't you make camp here until I get back? Mm, good idea. How soon will you return? Tomorrow morning. I'll be looking for you. So long, Captain. Goodbye, Martin. Tied hand and foot, the Lone Ranger was left in an army tent. Sergeant Aker had just stepped out of the tent to summon men to guard the prisoner when he saw Deal striding toward him. The man posing as Cass Martin turned sharply as the sergeant said, Deal. Huh? You talking to me? Yeah, you. You've made a mistake, sergeant. My name's Cass Martin. Save that for the captain, Deal. You and I both know that homesteader told the truth. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue. The Lone Ranger's attempt to expose Deal had failed. But there was one man in the army camp who had not been deceived by Deal's stolen credentials. Outside the tent where the Lone Ranger was a prisoner, Sergeant Aker confronted the imposter. Listen, Deal, ten years ago I did time in territorial prison. I don't know what you were in for, but I remember you. Not so long. I didn't tell Captain Spires you're not Cass Martin because I figure you must be playing for big stakes. You cut me in and I'll keep my mouth shut. All right, Sergeant. Maybe I can use some help. What's your game? Well, you see, there's always been hard feeling between cattlemen and homesteaders here. The cattlemen want an open range, so they pooled a lot of cash to buy out the homesteaders. The cattlemen didn't want to go near the homesteaders' valley to talk business, so they made me their, uh, uh, their agent. To buy out the settlers. That's hmm? the general idea. But I drew up a written agreement with the cattlemen saying I'll get the cash to use as I see fit. <laughs> The way it reads, it doesn't matter how the homesteaders are driven out, just so they're out. I've planned it so the Indians will drive them out or kill them off. Only I uh, didn't figure on your outfit moving in. Well, that'll spoil your scheme. You're wrong, Sergeant. I'm going to call on Big Bear now. He knows me as a friend. He'll believe me when I say the Army's coming to attack him. Well, that's likely to start a massacre. I know it. The Army will have to go through Red Rock Canyon to reach Springville... When they're in the canyon, the Indians will cut them down. Then they'll attack the settlers. What do you want me to do? Keep an eye on the sodbuster you've captured. If you have a chance, put a bullet through him so he can't make any more trouble. Better than a bullet, I'll use a knife. I'll get him while he's sleeping. Then I'll cut his hands free and tell a story that'll convince the captain that somehow he'd gotten hold of a knife and then attacked me in an effort to escape. Any way you want to do it, Sergeant. Just as long as you get rid of him. The Lone Ranger heard the low voice conversation. He'd learned the reason for Deal's plotting, for the near murder of Cass Martin, and for the outburst of trouble with Big Bear's peaceful tribe. But his knowledge was of little value. He was helpless, and his life was in danger. That night, Sergeant Aker volunteered to guard the prisoner. He paced before the tent until the camp was quiet. Then he moved inside. The Lone Ranger made believe he slept, but beneath his eyelids he could see the dark form approaching, and he knew that Sergeant Aker held a knife. He tensed his muscles, ready to stake everything on one single desperate move. Sergeant Aker bent close and began to raise the knife. Then suddenly the Lone Ranger acted. He brought up his knees and shot both feet out hard. <laughs> Sergeant Aker was struck with the impact of a battering ram. He staggered back and slumped to the ground. Hard boot heels had landed flush against his chin with knockout force. The Lone Ranger rolled toward the fallen man, ready to grip his throat in one hand, but the sergeant was unconscious. The Lone Ranger picked up the knife he had dropped and cut the rope from his ankles. Then he gripped it between his feet, blade up, and freed his wrists. Now, Sergeant, it's your turn to be tied and gagged. The Lone Ranger's guns were held by the captain, so he took the sergeant's weapon. After tying and gagging the unconscious soldier, he left the tent and moved silently through the darkness. He crept up behind the sentry, who was on duty at the edge of the camp. Sorry. <coughs> the way was clear to a rope corral where Silver waited. It'd be useless to try to warn the captain the deal is setting up an ambush. The best thing to do is to go to Big Bear's village. Easy city, big fellow. We'll have to hurry. Come on, Silver. <laughs> The Lone Ranger traveled steadily toward Big Bear's village. He avoided Deal by taking a shortcut in order to reach the Indians in the shortest possible time. Who's Silver? Who is he, steady big fellow? Once during the long ride, he paused beside a running stream to let Silver rest. Here, he removed his disguise and donned his familiar clothing and mask. Then he resumed his journey. Is he steady big fellow? Mon Silver! He reached the Indian village at daybreak and found the tribe preparing for war. Easy, Silver. Easy. 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 To the sentries who challenged him, he made the traditional gesture of peace and was permitted to ride into the village with his hands raised. Who, Silver? Who? Easy, Silver. No. He dismounted in front of Big Bear's wigwam. The chief looked at him and said, Why, masked man, come to village? 
he not know my people prepare for war? Great chief, for many years you and your people have lived at peace with the white man. White men no longer want peace. Who told you this? Friend, tell of white man's plans. Cass Martin did not tell you this. Cass Martin no longer friend of Indian. He has always been your friend. Him plot with settlers to kill my people. So you believe Deal. Deal, good friend of Indian. He's no one's friend. He's betraying the cattlemen, the army, and he'll betray you and your people when it suits his purpose. Great chief, I come from far away. In my travels, I have heard much of you and your people. What you hear? That you are great and honorable. Give me a chance to prove what I've told you. Though you wear a mask on face, this chief give you that chance. How you prove you speak truth? Send your men to the canyon if you wish. But you and I'll meet the army before the soldiers enter the canyon. That no good. Maybe the soldiers open fire. The soldiers will respect the flag of truce. But of course, if you're afraid, uh, I... This chief not no fear. Me go with you. That afternoon, Deal and Sergeant Aker rode with Captain Spires at the head of the detachment of troopers. They were approaching the entrance to Red Rock Canyon when the captain signaled a halt. Deal gasped in surprise when he saw a masked man astride a white stallion waiting on the trail ahead. With him was Chief Big Bear, wearing his war bonnet and ceremonial dress and holding a flag of truce. The chief raised his hand in a greeting of peace. Careful, Captain. Watch out for a trick. Well, Martin, you, you said the Indians were peaceful. Yes, but then why should I fear a trick? You were going to arrange a meeting between the chief and me. Who is it? Who is he sitting now? Captain Spires, this is Chief Big Bear. Oh, I'm delighted to meet the chief, but why does he come here with a masked outlaw? Man with mask asked this chief come here. What? Meet, Captain. The masked man arranged the meeting? No. Uh. But I thought Cass Martin... Captain, w- would you be willing to ask the man you know as Cass Martin to dismount and step forward? Easy, said to be... Now, see here, Captain. I see no harm in the request. Dismount, Martin. Him not, Cass Martin. What? This man is an imposter, Captain. His name is Deal. Chief Big Bear knows him as Deal. But his credentials... His credentials were stolen when he shot the real Cass Martin and left him for dead at the Indian agency. Cass Martin dead? He's alive, Chief Big Bear, but he's been badly wounded. My Indian friend Tonto is at the agency with him. Don't believe this masked man, Big Bear. I didn't shoot Martin. I I told you Deal was no friend, that he couldn't be trusted. Cass Martin will identify him as the man who shot him. With the papers he took from Martin, Deal went to the army. He told the captain he was Cass Martin. Him lied. Yes. He lied to the army and he lied to you. Cass Martin was not planning to murder you and your people. Captain. Yes? Deal convinced the chief that you were coming to destroy his tribe. He succeeded in persuading the chief to station his men in the canyon. You and the rest of the soldiers were heading for an ambush. No, no. It's true. Why, this is incredible. But what did Martin hope... I mean, Deal hoped to gain. The ranchers in Springville will tell you. That horse you're riding, mister, and your voice. What about it, Sergeant? You're the homesteader who escaped from the camp. You're the one who got away. You loco jughead, we wouldn't be in this trouble if it hadn't been for you. I told you to get rid of that homesteader. Shut up. I'll not shut up. You had the simplest part of the job, but you bungled it. Sergeant Aker, were you working with Deal? He knew all about my planes. He wanted me to cut him in. He threatened to expose me if I didn't. I told him everything, and he agreed to kill that sodbuster. In an effort to silence Deal, the sergeant reached for his gun, but the Lone Ranger's draw was faster. Sergeant, if your gun clears leather, I'll break your arm. Why, you... Now this chief no crooked soldier, work with Deal, start war between Indian and white man. Me take Deal back to village. My people punish for lies. No, no, Captain. Don't turn me over to the Indians. Chief Big Bear, the army will take charge of these two men. You may be sure they'll receive full punishment for what they've done. Corporal, disarm Deal and Sergeant Aker. Yes, sir. You might also take this gun, Captain. It's the one I took from Sergeant Aker last night. Well, then he was right. You are the homesteader who came to the camp. The guns in your holsters were taken from that homesteader. Oh, your own holsters are empty. Those guns are mine, Captain. Well, then I'll return them. But I... I had hoped to keep them. They're the finest colts I've ever seen. Oh, thank you. I can't imagine a homesteader owning weapons like those. I didn't say I was a homesteader. No, I suppose you didn't, but we assume Captain, that... Captain, I suggest you assure Chief Big Bear that you and your men are not here to make war. Of course. Chief Big Bear, my men and I did not come here to make war. 
We want peace with you and your people. That's good. Indian also want peace. Please, cut that off. Keep you off. Why, what's he doing? He's telling his braves to go to the canyon and call off the warriors waiting in ambush. He says that you and the soldiers are friends. We owe our lives to you, sir. Easy, steady, big fellow. I'm glad I was able to serve you, Captain. You mentioned the ranchers in Springville. Yes, they pooled money to buy out the homesteaders and delegated Deal to act for them. By tricks and lies, Deal caused the Indians to raid the settlers. He hoped to drive them out. Then the ranchers' money would be his. Oh, did the cattlemen know his plans? They hoped to buy an open range peaceably. I'm sure they knew nothing of Deal's conniving. I'll see that the ranchers get back their money. Then I'll talk to them and explain the situation. The ranchers must realize that civilization is moving west. The government wants it that way and will back the rights of the homesteaders. Easy. Oh, oh, oh. Warriors, some come from canyon, meet soldiers. Now that this chief know truth, me predisory learn Cass Martin hurt. He'll recover with Tonto's care, chief. You may be sure of that. I'm going to the Indian agency now. I'll tell Martin what you said. Well, adios, Captain. Adios, sir, and thank you. Monsilla! Chief Big Bear, who is that man? Him have Indian friend named Tonto. You know Tonto? Ah, uh, and me know Tonto, friend of Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.